Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today we have the update details for patch 3.4. And all I can say is, wowzers in my trousers. We are not getting Apocalypse, Wolverine's uniform, or Rogue's uniform. That will come in phase two of the Age of Apocalypse update. But we are, however, getting a lot of changes to the game in addition to Cable, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver and the two uniforms for Beast and Cyclops. So with that being said, let's jump into it and see exactly what we can expect from this update and what we can expect to change in the game and how we should pr prepare for it when it's coming. So Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver being brother and sister are obtained in the same way. They're going to be new world bosses and they're going to be the kind of tier one or the, the base level native tier two characters. So think Proxima Midnight, think uh, Super Giant, Black Dwarf, that's their level of, in terms of resources that you need, and gold. Then Cable is kind of the mega, or the second tier, second phase, second level of tier 2. The likes of Doctor Strange, Thanos, Dormammu, Odin, so he costs double of everything, that's for Cable. Now, as far as Scarlet Witch goes, you're going to see a common theme among their four-star passives or their tier two passives. They're all very strong and they all include this mechanic that we saw popularized with Jean Grey. It's the chance to penetrate super armor barrier sh uh, shield all damage immune invincible on a percentage of the time. So it's not as strong as Jean Grey's fifth skill which triggers a uh, hundred percent, but it is stronger in the sense that it's always active. Jean Grey, if she doesn't prioritize her fifth skill, especially in autoplay, she doesn't have that effect at all. Scarlet Witch and the other two characters have this effect active all the time. It's just that it's not 100% chance. It only works 60% of the time, but 60% of the time it works every time. Wanda has increased energy damage. She is a blast native tier 2. She also has a heal on her uh, four star skill, so she's a very powerful character even before she gets to six stars, especially in something like Shadowland where you get that heal. And she also has reflect damage uh, tied to one of her skills. She does deal energy damage, which is fantastic on three of her five skills. And a lot of her skills have debuffs. She has bind debuffs, she has uh, Ant Man shrinking debuffs, all attack debuffs, and especially mind resistant debuffs. So you're going to be able to steamroll enemies very quickly, especially if you have a mind damage obelisk, in addition to the mind resistance that she lowers up to 100%. So negative 100% is a serious issue. In addition to the heal, she also has a guard hit on her fourth skill, Chaos Sphere, which gives her more survivability, and she has five seconds of immunity for herself on her third skill. Her third skill looks like it should be the best skill for her because it triggers her um, pierce or her heal effect, and it also uh, dispels enemies' um, buffs and debuffs like Time Freeze, Heal Circle, similar to Karnak's third skill with his uniform. So she looks like a very powerful character for this game. Then we have her brother, Quicksilver, our first native tier 2 speed, so Deadpool fans cry your eyes out. He also seems extremely powerful. He is no slouch by any means. He also has that chance to pierce or penetrate, I should say, as part of his four-star passive unstoppable momentum. His leadership looks kind of lame, either 6 or 12% uh, dodge rate in all speed, still not good enough compared to 45% energy damage, but whatever speed characters will take it. His tier 2 passive gives him a whopping 50% dodge ignore, 45% guaranteed dodge, and in increased damage. So I think Quicksilver may be the dark horse of this update because he has incredible PvP potential. Not only does he have 45% guaranteed dodge, which makes him a huge threat, especially to the likes of Jean Grey because she doesn't have native ignore dodge, but also gives him ignore dodge, which means that he is not susceptible to being punished by the likes of the spiders, especially who are making their way into the meta with Miguel and Spider-Man uh, homecoming uniform. So he may be able to take down both of those characters uh, at the same time, which makes him immediately invaluable. Then his skills don't have a lot of text, so we are going to have to wait on the actual animations. The only skill that has text is his third skill, not yet, and that will give him a pretty sizable buff of dodge, all attack, and a heal. So that should be a fantastic skill. Seven and a half second cooldown. Bueno. Looks like an interesting character to me. Then we have Cable, another native tier two blast type. It, 
at the same level as Doctor Strange in terms of cost. Not really happy with that. Wish he was Combat or Universal or Wanda was, but whatever. Cable has a pretty lame sounding leadership from the looks of it. 50% ignore dodge. That's what Quicksilver has on his tier 2 passive, but whatever. Fine. Let's see the rest. Also has chance to pierce. Notice that he has the highest chance at 75%. Or sorry, penetrate. I keep saying pierce, but it's basically the same thing. He just ignores those effects if it's on an obelisk or if it's on a passive or it's on a skill. And he just keeps doing damage. His tier 2, however, seems a bit weak. Guaranteed crit 30% is nice. May make him a threat for blast male uh, universe. Uh, extreme alliance battle but the skill damage is basically the only other part of it nothing else really to write home about then his skills also give him that karnak third skill activation where he gets rid of any positive or negative area of effect buffs that the enemy has laid down and then it also gives chance to miss which is a cool mechanic that we haven't seen explored too much because we don't have blind resistance or immunity as part of uh, an obelisk yet then we have increased crit rate on his second skill. We've got a heal and a guard hit on his third skill. And we've got five seconds of invincibility on his fifth skill in addition to channeling. So it will be a channeling skill like Cyclops' fifth skill and like Storm's second skill. Overall, I like all three of these characters. I think they're going to be very powerful. I do think we are going to see a slight to large shift in the meta, especially for competitive play. Uh, with these introduction, with the introduction of these new characters, and it is going to devalue forever the um, you know invincibility and immunity that regular characters have on some of their skills. Because the more characters we have that can automatically penetrate those effects, the less you can count on those effects, especially from an obelisk, to actually save your character from dying. So. It's much more meaningful for PvP than PvE, but it looks like the PvP meta is going to shift back to one that is more predicated on long iframes and guaranteed dodge than just simply immunity or invincibility. So that should be interesting to uh, keep up with and monitor. Then we have these two new uniforms, so we're not getting Wolverine and Rogue as I said. I am disappointed with these uniforms, Netmarble. You're just buffing the... Um, the, the four star passives, tier two passives, and leaderships of these characters, really not enough. I would like to see what the skill changes are before I give my final verdict, but right now my feeling is lukewarm towards these two uniforms. Then we have new world bosses, which is quite cool. So the regular world bosses are not going anywhere, but we are just getting an additional world boss stage set up for Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Cable. So that's how you're going to get their, their bios to unlock them. And then you're going to have to use Black Antimatter and Chaos Nordstones to rank them up, which means that they're not going to waste, which is awesome. Now, we have already talked about the world boss beginner, so we're not going to touch on that, but we are getting these new Age of Apocalypse world boss stages, and this is the first wave. So it's very similar to the Black Order wave, how we first got Proxima Corvus and Black Dwarf, three and three, and then we're all going to be getting, or we got Thanos, Ebony, and Supergiant later. So hopefully we'll be getting Apocalypse, I don't know, Gambit, and Iceman later. Thanks, Snoopy. Anyways, so the three new world boss stages, as we stated, are the three new characters. As you can see here, uh, they are a little bit different than the regular stages. So they're not going to just open up on specific days. In order to open up these stages, you're going to have to unlock them, kind of like a mini epic quest, by doing a bunch of different um, other things in the game. So if you complete other quests in the game, if you clear other stages it will go towards unlocking these world boss stages that you can then complete five times per day like the irregular world boss stages as you can see from this uh, icon or this graphic for example on quicksilver stage in order to unlock him once you unlock him you never have to do it again so it's not like you have to repeat this every day and you can see that you can't repeat this every day because some of these effects or some of these um, quests cannot be completed in one day unless you use crystals to refresh your entries. For example, clear five daily missions. Normally you can only clear two per day, so if you're totally free to play, it's gonna take you at minimum three days to unlock uh, Quicksilver from the drop of the update. But again, once you unlock it, you don't have to do it again. It's a bit lame that Netmarble has allowed you to skip this entire kind of epic quest by just paying crystals to unlock it, but 
for the people who want to really whale out, go ahead. I'm probably just going to refresh my entries in these regular game modes because it costs much less crystals. Like daily missions is only like 100 crystals the first time to refresh it, and you only have to refresh it twice. Or if you wait until after the update and after the daily timer, you have to just refresh it once because you get three in total from the two days so it should be interesting to see uh how many you know different effects and different requirements we have um from one of the other moba rooms apparently you have to beat quicksilver 70 times in order to unlock cable so that means that we're going to not see any cables in the wild for quite some time unless they suddenly allow us to refresh world boss entries which i don't think is the case uh, so that's pretty cool that they're adding an extra layer of requirements for getting these world bosses. It should make them feel more premium compared to the regular world bosses that we already have. And it should be a fun little mini quest, mini epic quest to go on before the world bosses. So I really love this update. I love the kind of artificial content that Netmarble is plugging in here. I do think it's quite nice. Um, and we'll see how, how difficult it really is. Um, as you can see here, this is unlocking the stage, and you can then pay crystals to unlock it, which I think is kind of lame. Um, and then this is pretty interesting. The unlocked world boss stages are played the same way as the regular ones. However, the characters that you use to play in this game mode will also take away from the regular game mode. So that's going to be interesting to see um, how much more difficult it is to clear 5 and 5. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Then we have changes to the regular world boss system. So instead of having each day correspond to a different world boss, you know, Monday is Proxima, Tuesday is Black Dwarf, no. Now each day is just gonna have all of the world bosses, the regular Black Order world bosses available to play. So very similar to the last day of the week for World Boss Ultimate, where you can choose between all of the different ones. Now you can play Infinity Thanos every single day if you want for the regular World Boss stages. Why you would play the regular World Boss stages instead of the new World Bosses like Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Cable is beyond me, but we'll have to wait and see. In addition, again, a little bit of artificial content uh, in inserted, we are going to be getting a Today's World Boss buff. So this is pretty cool. Um, since you can choose any world boss every single day, to incentivize you to choose a particular world boss on a particular day, they're going to give you additional rewards if you clear that stage that's being chosen for you for the today's world boss. So it's kind of like a buff uh, randomly applied, a, a, a loot buff randomly applied every day to one of the existing Black Order world bosses. And it will be different for each agent, so it might be Corvus every day for me and it might be you know different characters for you every day so I really like that I think it's very cool uh, however the world boss clear effects like 10% all speed 10% all attack will not apply to the new world boss stages for Quicksilver Scarlet Witch and Cable so that is an interesting thing to note it does make them a little bit more difficult then we have the world boss beginner mode. The rewards for this mode are lower than regular world boss, so they have not nerfed or killed this mode or even affected the the value of Chaos Nordstones and Black Antimatter, which is quite interesting. And then you can see here, it's got the buffs that they already discussed. In addition, they are changing the shield lab. They're making it quite a lot more valuable. So what they're basically doing is they're taking the old version where you would pay uh, certain biometrics of a character to get other biometrics. And now what you're going to do is you're going to get still random biometrics, but instead of having a limit, there is no limit, but there is a certain number of jackpot events that you can have when you are producing, for example, new bios or new materials. So as per this example here uh, on this uh, picture, you can see here that the first nine, the first eight times that they rolled for this effect or they did this conversion two bios to one random combat bio, they just got one of each character, but then they got the jackpot on the ninth, which gave them double the amount of bios. Instead of one, it was two for Iron Fist. 
Obviously, this is pretty bad. Uh, generally speaking, one bio or this looks like 11 bios for 20 is just not good value. Uh, we will have to wait and see if it's bios to bios or if there's something else that you can use. For example, if you're just using the pink antimatter to get these, this will be a new and you know solid avenue for accruing random bios to sacrifice for leveling up native tier two characters. It may also make uh, story mode farming less appealing because you can now get tons of bios quickly for different characters. You can see that it's not gated by days, so it's not like you can only get the blast one on certain days and only get the combat ones on other days. So it makes it a lot more uh, appealing to just go in and jump in and try and get new bios. I do like all of these changes, although it's a bit nuanced. I don't want to get into too many details right now, but it does seem to be just above the board, all buffs to the shield lab. So don't feel bad if you've upgraded your shield lab. And if you haven't, you may have to start because this may be a really good new way of getting different materials. As far as the materials you can get, you can get comic cards now, you can get ISOs, you can probably get obelisks, although I haven't seen it from any of the pictures. You can also get Mcron crystals and um, Phoenix feathers. So everything that's originally available from the conversion is now going to be available through other means and there's not going to be a daily limit on it so that's fantastic and there's also going to be a jackpot chance which means you get double rewards which is also fantastic so that's what this is all detailing as you can see they've also changed the animation or the the picture the image for the boxes so don't get confused these aren't new boxes they're just existing boxes that have been reworked so they all look different now so five star iso sounds pretty good heroic comic card sounds Sounds very good should make comic card upgrading a little bit easier I look forward to all of these shield lab changes thank you netmarble this is just detailing it's uh, addition, additional stuff then we have some very interesting changes to missions you're going to be able to clear ticket a lot more of the missions than you would before so you can now clear ticket um, things like the epic quest missions you can clear ticket special missions and in addition they are making the game more accessible to people who can't play for long periods of time so I think special missions were due for a change because some people just can't have their phone or their tablet on for 20 minutes straight to run their special missions so they lose some of that time because the timer keeps going even if you have to close out of the game now instead you are given 20 entries per day that you can complete at any time of the day and it will become a little bit more interesting because I think hot time is going away boys which is probably the only negative or the only blemish of this update but we'll talk about that in a little bit I think this change is very good and it was needed it's also going to make it less of a priority to figure out who is the fastest clearer because you're not going to be racing against the clock in special missions to get as many entries done as you could I think I could get about 20 entries of lizards mission because it was so short with Wolverine but I definitely was not getting 20 on some Someone like Rhino or Mysterio but now I will be able to get 20 on all of them because the flat 20 entries no matter which one you're going for so I think this is a fantastic change uh, not one that we were essentially asking for or even thinking about but one that I'm very happy to see and this is especially good for newer players and the intermediate players it doesn't affect veterans so much but this is very very good for the kind of first two tiers of characters fantastic so as you can see there, we have the availability, uh, 20 out of 20. You can also clear it with a clear ticket and a hidden ticket. If you don't use a hidden ticket, you can still have a chance of getting additional rewards from finding a hidden route as far as part of the clear ticket benefit. So you still have that. You don't lose anything. There's basically no... Um, negative or there's no disadvantage of using clear tickets on special missions aside from the fact that you're using up clear tickets and you're not getting experience for your characters. So that's really fantastic. I love these changes. Uh, and then we are also getting changes to the way the game modes actually look. So one thing that I complained about in a couple of my videos was iframes and just not having enough information on the screen. Unfortunately, this isn't going to uh, apply to the enemy, so you're, I'm not going to be getting a lot more information. But you will be able to know what's going on with your character. And again, I think this helps 
new players and intermediate players more than it helps veterans. Essentially, what it's going to do is, as you can see for Whiplash, he's using his third skill, which is an iframe. That's why the X is there. The X means he's not targetable. That's what an iframe means. Looks a bit ugly. Don't worry. You can disable this in the settings. So if you don't want to see, you don't have to. I'm going to experiment with it and see if I like it. But usually I can remember what all the effects are of different characters. So for veterans who are very well versed in the game and have everything committed to memory, they won't really need this but for players who don't know what's going on and don't want to hover over the character's portrait and click on the little boxes to see what all of the buffs are this will now give you a visual representation of the buffs on your character making it much easier to see what's going on here are a couple other examples of invincibility of guard hits of uh, shields from isos and stuff like that so all of it is included i think this is a nice quality of life change especially for the players like i said in those first two categories doesn't really matter too much for veterans might be a bit annoying after a while so I think once you get used to it you might turn it off because it doesn't look very nice but we'll have to wait and see maybe it's just something that I need to get used to then they're changing the way that they indicate the difficulty of stages so again this helps newer players understand what they're missing it shows the team attack so you can more easily gauge how far you are from being able to complete a mission these are just all very nice quality of life changes that are going to make the game more accessible and more uh, understandable and relatable for players who are just jumping in and who don't have two plus years of experience to rely on to understand things so i love these updates i love these changes Come to me, my noobs. You are all my children. Very nice. So then we have additionally changes to the chest store and the chest kind of system. This is a change that I think the free-to-play players are going to get behind the most, but I do have some warnings for you. So the, now the chests um, that you can buy and that you get for free are part of a separate tab. We still have the one chest or more than one chest per day that's free depending on your VIP level. So that, that free hero chest of one star chest has not changed. However, the premium hero chest has changed. Now the premium hero chest will include all of the X-Men that you can get normally from biometric selectors so in this premium hero chest that you buy for crystals not the free one you will be able to get rogue beast storm and cyclops you will not be able to get wolverine obviously gene gray obviously or magneto but you will be able to get those for x-men and you will also be able to get premium characters so as you can see from the box art we see enchantress we see agent venom so you will be able to get the uh, bio sub characters however these premium hero chests do cost crystals. In addition, there are over 120 characters in this chest. Do not expect to pull the character you want from it. Yes, there's a chance you can get Carnage for free. Yes, there's a chance that you can get Kid Kazoo for free. The chance is very slim, less than 1% chance actually. So I would caution people against buying this when it comes out. If you wanna test your luck and go and jump into the gacha system, be my guest, but you also always have an assured, albeit costly, alternative. The bio sub costs money, but it's a guarantee. This does not cost money technically, but it's not a guarantee. So you could definitely be throwing your crystals away. That may turn some people off from the game. I just want to warn you guys, it's good and bad. I think it's mostly bad, but it is a way for free-to-play players to get paywall characters in some fashion now. So that's that's a thing that happened in the game now. That's pretty cool. In addition, we've already talked about the chest designs and visual effect improvements. So when opening the boxes, you're gonna have more fanfare and it's gonna look pretty. I always like those kinds of changes. And we are also seeing the boxes change in their little picture. I kind of like these, I kind of don't. They kind of remind me of a sci-fi adventure like Mass Effect or something like that. So I, I'm not gonna hate on it in Marble, but I did kind of like the way the old boxes looked, the little purple and gold stars. I wish they had just edited that image a little bit instead of going with this kind of glowing chest thing but it's fine it doesn't matter in addition we have a quite a few other changes we have a lot of ios heavy changes like 3d touch which is cool for ios users um, we have additional team management things that you can do this stuff is really not important you can read about this on your own you are going to be able to record now uh, for ios only natively built into the app so that's very cool that's going to allow people who wanted to share clips or even become people like me more easily so more power to you guys 
I hope to see a lot of cool stuff from the community. So that's pretty nice. And then we're getting something different. Boost points. Um, this is the part that I'm a little bit confused about. It's not clear if boost points are replacing uh, assemble points that you get from your friends or if this is just an additional feature. I'm not sure. The way that I understand boost points is that they're going to allow you to boost the rewards that you're getting from game content. So as you can see there, you're going to be able to boost how much hero XP you're getting, how much gold you're getting from clearing missions and stages, how much energy you're using. So that's the hot time is dead indicator, how much shield XP you're getting for your account level, and then how many bonus rewards you're acquiring. So that would be things like hidden ticket rewards, bonus biometrics. Uh, it could also possibly be the bonus uh, things that you get from higher quality rifts like the bonus comic cards the bonus gold from legendary rifts epic rifts heroic rifts stuff like that however the boost points are accrued in kind of a strange way you just kind of get them they recharge very slowly you can also recharge them with you guessed it crystals yay i don't want to pay crystals to get hot time net marble no thank you so hopefully we don't have to talk about this in a video separately about how crappy this is hopefully if this is getting rid of hot time and allowing you to trigger hot time whenever you want it's not that difficult to obtain or it lasts long enough so ideally in the in the best case scenario you get enough points per day enough boost points per day that you can buff up for a total of let's say four hours. So you could do a one hour increment four times at four different times during the day when you can play to give yourself a self buffed hot time or you know, two two hour increments. I think four hours is kind of the sweet spot. Maybe with the introduction of all these clear tickets for special missions, they're gonna reduce the longevity of hot time. So maybe only two hours will be needed. So you may only get enough boost points for that. But if you only have enough boost points for like half an hour in one daily rotation, for free, I'm going to be a little bit upset about that, especially if they erase hot time with this change altogether. I do think this does mean that we're moving away from hot time, we're moving away from kind of the XP events. They may still have them on very special occasions, but I think it's going to be much rarer now. I'm a little bit worried, however, there isn't any language in this update patch notes that indicates that that's going to happen so it's a bit of just my cynicism but do be warned it may signal the end of hot time and other of those kind of boost um, times of the day so you can see there those are the boost points that gives you additional stuff and then it tells you you're getting boosted rewards from those missions pretty pretty cool in addition the oh this is not the right shop anyways this is just buying boost points for crystals I got a little bit excited sorry um, in addition, you can uh, register your email in your account. I don't know what that means, if that if that adds an extra layer of security or not. It's a bit unclear. Um, if you still have to register your, if you're registering your email, do you still have to connect to your Facebook or your uh, Google Play? If not, it may make your account more or less secure depending on who you are, but it's a nice added benefit, I guess. I don't see the value in it too much. We're also getting a new species, which is going to be called Other, which is what both Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are. However, Wiccan will still not be an other. I'm a bit confused about this. I think we're going to need some additional clarification. In addition, we are getting changes to a bunch of characters. Uh, their abilities are changing. Existing characters that didn't have web immunity are getting web immunity. So this most impacts Spider-Man 2099. He does not have any web immunity. Now he does. So if you rolled an obelisk for him with web immunity, kind of sucks for you. Good for everybody else. I like these changes. The only change I don't understand and I don't really like, if someone could explain this to me, is why Daredevil is included in this. Daredevil, radar sense, immunity to blind effects, removed. So you're saying the blind guy is no longer immune to blind. Really? Okay, that makes sense. As if you didn't do enough dirty work to, to Daredevil. I may be overreacting here, but if I'm not, this is kind of a punch in the face. To a blind man. Not cool, Netmarble. Not cool. Then we are getting some additional descriptors for uh, world boss stages and um, kind of uh, world boss uh, invasion stuff that you can do. Really not that interesting. Some other stuff is happening with known uh, details or known uh, issues being fixed, like little bugs and stuff like that. Uh, and some other issues 
and other stuff. You can read this on your own. It's not that important. The part that I was excited about is the Chaos Token Shop. This is what I thought the boost points were. Now we are going to be able to purchase Black Antimatter and Nordstones of Chaos in the Chaos Shop. So if you haven't been clearing uh, Villain Siege, you suck and you should because this is fantastic. This is fantastic for everyone. New players, veterans, the whole kit and caboodle. I'm very excited about this. It's going to allow me to tier two characters faster and it's going to allow me to balance out my Black Antimatter to Chaos Nordstone um, resource pool more effectively. I believe the 50 Black Antimatter costs 800 Villain Siege tokens and the 80 Chaos Nordstones cost 1300 Villain Siege tokens. So that's not a lot because you can say you could have saved up at least or at most 60,000 tokens. So that's a lot of Chaos Nordstones, boys and girls. That's a lot. That's very good. Gonna make the epic quests easier for new players. Love it. Love this change, Net Marble. Thank you. We're also getting a new purchasable. Um, thing that you can buy Loki secret story looking at it it looks like the one we've already seen for the login event i think they're just renaming one of the other ones which is just chaos nordstones and black antimatter every day not a good thing to purchase uh judging by the old crystal cost unless they've changed it and then we're getting some changes to ant-man skill and that's the whole update so that is the details for this update we are missing some important things. We haven't yet gotten any indication of whether or not they're going to fix the Doctor Strange bug in Extreme Alliance Battle, so I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't cover that in these patch notes, but we'll have to wait and see. The maintenance is happening, not happening nine hours from the drop of this video at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, so please make sure that you uh, collect things in your box that are going to decay over time. The update will be for six hours, so if you have anything that's you know at least seven hours or less, you should probably collect it before you log off of your device and you stop playing the game. In addition, guys, as you already know, I will be on Twitch starting from one hour before the update is finished. I don't recommend that you guys do daily content because it seems like you're going to need to do a lot of it for the new world bosses. So don't uh, you know run and, and finish those things hoping that they're all going to be refreshed. Weekly rewards should be collected because they are going to refresh, but that should be all. It seems like Netmarble is trying to reset the weekly cycle to be maybe more in line with the Shadowland reset for the week. I'm not sure, but we'll have to wait and see if that affects Extreme Alliance battle scores and stuff like that. I don't know. We'll have to see. It may just be the... Um, it may just be the achievements and the rewards that we can collect for the week. And finally, one more time, 24-hour mega live stream marathon on Twitch, boys. I will be there from one hour before the update until 7 p.m. the next day. So we're going to be able to play through two full instances of all of the daily stuff with the new world bosses, with the new characters. Won't be able to get all three of them, obviously, ranked up, but we will be able to probably get Quicksilver and potentially his sister as well. So it's going to be super exciting. I recommend that you guys check it out. If you have any questions or any, you know, lingering thoughts or you just want to see what the new update looks like and you don't have the gold or you don't have all the things saved up like I do, hop on by, ask some questions in chat, spam some spaghetti, and I hope to see you all there. Thank you guys so much for the continued support. I love all of you guys. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow, baby. Take care.